Today's video is actually sponsored by me. So obviously my channel is really small. I don't have sponsors obviously, but you know, I want to thank you guys for clicking on the video and I hope you guys enjoy. You know, if you guys enjoy, you know, please go ahead and show some support. The biggest thing that you can do to support is to subscribe, you know, watch my previous videos and comment, like, you know, tell me how you guys are enjoying the content. I also am going to be putting a link in the description below. You know, I've been just messing around making some t-shirts just for fun off Teespring and you know, hopefully I can get um, the resources to be able to make my own shirts and instead of having to outsource them. But um, I'm also going to throw in my Patreon link. I don't really like Patreon and it's okay if, you know, I don't get any support on there. But until my channel does grow and I can get monetized, then I've decided to uh, make one to see if I can get a little bit of extra support to get these videos to you guys and get good quality content. Now... With that being said, I do want to announce some giveaways that I'm going to be trying to do as we grow at 100, at 500, and 1,000 subscribers. So if we can hit those milestones, uh, those are personal goals for me. I'm happy to give back to you guys and, you know, trying to build a community here. So, you know, obviously I'm supporting and sponsoring these videos by myself because I enjoy making them. So I'm hoping you guys enjoy watching them as much as I'm enjoying making them and, you know, Stay in, stay tuned for what we have coming and, you know, I appreciate all the support that I've gotten so far and, you know, hope that we can grow. But thanks for watching, guys. Let's get into it. What is going on today, guys? Today, I'm pretty excited about what we're going to be doing because today we got the car in the garage and I am going to be trying to install a sun strip on my windshield. First time I've ever done this so I guess we'll see how it turns out the cool thing is I got this for it was a little over 20 bucks and it claims to be you know very high grade sun blocking uh, window tint that's just because it's a fairly small piece but it is high grade so I found some that was you know 11 bucks 15 bucks stuff like that and I was like you know what 25 bucks not that much to get the what they claim is the higher grade quality so we're gonna go ahead and get that installed and you know hopefully it comes out good so let's go take a look at what i've already done with the windshield all right guys so this is where i'm at so far i've just cleaned with a um with some dish soap and water some warm water i got that all wiped down then i took a razor blade and i cleaned off you know making sure that i can't hear any uh any dirt or any debris on there so we have that all cleaned and took obviously took the the mirror off the nice thing about the tent is i did unroll it and i took a look and it already does have that um it already does have that cut out so we won't have to worry about that and got a heat gun just in case so what i'm going to do is i'm going to clean on the windshield on the top just to make sure this is all clean and then I'm gonna take the tent, I'm gonna put it on the outside first. The reason why I'm gonna put it on the outside is I wanna see if it's able to form to the window without having any issues. So if your tent is relatively flat, then you don't necessarily have to worry about heating it up. You just have to get it installed and get all the water out and get the adhesive to stick. But if your windshield has too much curvature, the tint is not going to actually lay and it needs to be morphed to the window. So the way that you form it to the window is you put it on the outside first when it still has the film on it and you can heat it up and shrink it to, you know, the, the, the curvature of the windshield. And then when it's all has the shape that you need, you take the adhesive off, you spray the adhesive with the water and then you take it on the inside and you slap it on. So, the curvatures that you really want to look for, obviously there's a curve right here, right? Every windshield is going to have that kind of curve. But depending on your actual vehicle, this is the curve that you want to look at. 
So your tent can't really do two curves without being morphed, but it can do one curve. So if this is not too curved, then I should be able to get it to form to the window. Um, but if it has too much of a curve and you can see, you know, there is a little bit of curve going on. And then obviously there's a curve going this way. And just remember, um, you don't want your tent to touch anything um, harsh, like chemicals and things like that, that are gonna be in window cleaners. So when you're doing this part, soapy water and stuff like that, because the window cleaners are gonna try to have a, a chemical in them that's gonna make it shine, that's gonna help it, you know, clean up like that. Whereas you just need some, you know, like dish soap or something to essentially get any of the grease and things off like that, so. So when you do tint, this is how you want it to really look. You want it to be really, really clean on both sides. This way you can actually see through it and you can actually see, is there something on the inside and on the outside? Because if your outside window is dirty, when you're putting the tint on, it's gonna be hard to tell which side it's on. And so, you know, and then when you lay it down, you want literally nothing to stick to it. So we have it all cleaned. It's all scraped on the backside with a razor blade and we're gonna go ahead and grab it and see how it morphs to the window. Okay, so this is exactly what I'm talking about. So you have the tent on here, right? So you wanna obviously, you know, try to match up where the cutout is for this, but uh, we're on the outside right now. So anytime that you get pre-cut tent, they're gonna give you a lot of the extra, right? So they just cut a, a foot strip and then they feed that foot strip through the cutter and the program cuts it out. So, so you'll be able to fill which side is the film. So the sticky side is facing upwards. So when this peels, it'll peel it. So when I peel it this way, um, the film is gonna come off this way and then this is what's left over, right? So the best way to peel the film is, you know, from comments that I had on my first video when I was learning how to do this was, you know, get it stuck to the outside of the window and then you can peel it off or you can, you know, stick it anywhere on the car and then peel it off so that you don't want it to fold and touch the adhesive to have it touch itself. You'll run into problems that way. So what I'm talking about with the curvature, right? So you can see the curvature goes along this way just fine, but you can see what happens with this film is it's starting to bubble up right here, right? So you don't want this here. You wanna make sure that the before you actually take it off and you get ready to actually install it, you wanna make sure that this has the curvature it needs. And because the film is protecting it here and it hasn't been ripped off yet, you, can, you don't have to worry about, you know, you can get your squeegee, you can heat it up, you can, you know, morph it that way. So I actually think that there's not enough curvature from here and from here. So I think this is going to be relatively fat. So I'm not even going to worry about heating it. And we're just going to go ahead and try to install it without heating it and see how that works. But you can see testing it, especially right here, you can see it's like bubbling up. Ideally, you would want this to be completely flat, completely morphed. That way you know that it's ready to go when you take the adhesive off and it's ready to, it's actually ready to, to form to the window. Once that adhesive is on there, you know, you're, you're pretty much accepting the way that it's gonna be and then you might have to heat it. Hopefully you don't um, mess it up. But as you can see, I think it's able to follow the curve and it should be able to be put on. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna try to install it.
first of all, it's really, really hot in my garage. It's over 100 degrees today and it's so hot outside. Um, sitting in the garage and sitting in my car make it really difficult to have the patience. So I messed up. And I'm gonna post this video even though I didn't get it on successfully, which really bums me out. But I do wanna put this video up because it, I wanna show you guys how easy it is to make a mistake and how easy it is to, to not be able to come back from it, right? Because when you have a crease in your tent or it's essentially not um, going on, you know, this is something that you need to know before you put your tent on because I bought this, I spent like 24 bucks on it or something like that. And it wasn't as long as I hoped it would be. So I'm, I was thinking that as I was putting it on, I looked at it from the outside when it was almost done that, you know, I probably wanted something different anyway. Um, but I want you guys to watch this and I want you guys to think about this if you're actually putting your tin on, okay? So, okay, so really, hopefully I can explain this well. What you wanna do is you want to, let's say I'm trying to push everything over to this side, right? Like I was, I was trying to get everything over to this side, but I had already tacked this side down because everything I had left here was all my bubble and I had tacked it down this way and I had tacked it down this way. So there was no more give to go this way or this way. So. Once I started to try to address the water and push out all the air bubbles this way, there was nowhere to go, right? So what I should have done is the rear view mirrors right here, I should have tacked up everything to this side to make sure like two or three inches to this side of the rear view mirror was good. And then I should have started to work this way and really get those out of the way because if there was still water here, then I, should, I would have been able to push it all the way out and get it towards the edges. I was hoping I could get it up to the top and to the bottom. That's why I tacked down these sides, but I couldn't get it. It just was not working out. So that's the reason why I ended up just tearing it off because I ended up getting creases here. So I want you guys to take that into consideration when you're doing this is the rear view mirrors here. Start over here on the other side of it, get all that out of the way and then really work that air and work that water out. And don't, don't tack down this corner. So you can tack down that corner, you can work all the way across, but don't get anything out of this side until you're kind of working across, you know what I mean? Because if you leave anything here and then this side gets tacked and then there's no more um, soap and water to, uh, to work with, everything that's in here is gonna be stuck. So that's kind of why I ripped it off. That's kind of why it didn't work for me. So I'm gonna put this video up so that you guys know the mistakes to avoid. Now, this is not an easy process. Nobody's gonna claim that putting window tint on is easy, but the windshield um, definitely is very difficult to accomplish. So that's why uh, it didn't work out and I hope that you guys watch this video and if you guys are thinking about and if you guys are thinking about doing stuff yourself you take that into consideration you learn from my mistakes and hopefully you get that on there better than I did all right guys well that is a huge bummer to me um, really wanted that to go on really wanted that to be a smooth process and I wanted to show you guys that yes even you the inexperienced person can buy a cheap sun visor window tint and you can get that installed. Um, I still think that is the case and I will still buy another one and get it on this vehicle and I have to do my truck. But hopefully you guys can learn from my mistake. You don't have to waste it like I did to have the learning experience that I did. So that's where I'm gonna leave it. You know, I hope you guys liked it. I hope you guys um, actually enjoyed watching my mistakes and learning from them. Uh, with that being said, um, you know, please go and comment and, you know, let me know of any other tips and tricks maybe that I missed. And, you know, let me know when you do yours and you actually get yours on. And, you know, hopefully some of my tips that I learned from my mistakes will actually help you guys get it on and actually help you guys, um, you know, get it installed successfully. So, 
you know, get down there, like, comment, subscribe, stay tuned. We're going to be doing another one. Hopefully I can get it on and then we'll do it on the truck as well. You know, so stay tuned. I hope you guys like this kind of content because I'm trying to do things that I don't know how to do that I can show you guys what it's like before you tackle it for your first time. That's what my channel is all about is tackling something for the first time and learning from your mistakes. Hopefully you guys can watch this video before you do it and you learn from my mistake and then you don't even have to worry about it. And then the first time you do it actually goes on successful. So that's what we're all about here is trial and error, learning from your mistakes. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.